Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Gary. I'm a cybersecurity professional by day. If you finished my command line 101 video or you already know the command line basics, come and have a look at this. We're going to learn Nmap, which is the network mapper. It allows you to scan a network. It allows you to identify hosts on that network that are active, scan those hosts and try and find vulnerabilities in services that are running. It's a really important tool to learn how to use. Rule number one though, is you never ever use this tool on things you're not allowed to. So you can use it on Hack the Box, for example, on their services when you're hacking. Probably not their actual website though. You can use it if you're doing Try Hack Me. You can use it in the offensive security labs. You can use it in your own home network. But do not, I repeat, do not Nmap everyone and anyone on the internet. Bad idea. So with that being said, let's take a look. So Nmap's a bit of a cult hit. It's been in a whole bunch of movies, notably The Matrix. It was in Ocean's 8. I don't think anybody watched that movie. They even used it to hack into Matt Damon's brain in the movie Elysium. This ain't gonna kill me. If you haven't heard about it though, don't worry. We're gonna look here at this reference guide. This is a really handy little guide here. If you want to just come and read every single thing that Nmap has to offer, this is the place to do it. But I'm not going to show you that because that would be quite boring. Boring. So let's actually look at Nmap. So Nmap-H as always to look at the help file. At the bottom here you'll see there's this thing called scanme.nmap.org. Now I happen to know that that's Nmap offering up a website for us all to play with. So let's have a play with it. If I scroll up this help file, you'll see the usage terms here, Nmap, specify the scan type and the options for it, and then a target. So for example, you can pass a host name or an IP address or an entire network to Nmap and it'll work. So here's an example, scanme.nmap.org. Don't scan that one. You can even supply a whole list in a text file. And here's the different scan types. So let's look at a ping scan. We're gonna do this on my home network. Nmap-sn, and then I'm gonna specify my home network range. If you don't know anything about network ranges, network submapping, any of those fantastically exciting things, I'll put some links in the description and you can go and have a read. Then I'm going to type T4 to increase the speed at which this runs and I'll type dash V to increase the verbosity so it prints it out on the screen. So that's it finished. Let's look at the output. So we've got some hits. We also have a whole load of garbage that we want to get rid of. You see all of these lines that say host down. So let's do the search again and we'll grep to remove host down. So we just get nice clean results. Here's what we do. We grep. If you haven't seen grep, that means you haven't seen my command line 101 video. Link is in the description. Go and check that out. If we do grep dash V, it will exclude things from the results and we want to exclude the word down. So let's hit that and let it run again. There we go. Much better results. You can see master bedroom TV, master bedroom, some weird Mac address, living room, ring camera. Okay, so now we have a much better set of results here. A nice clean list with no nonsense in it. You can see it's scanned 256 IP addresses and has found 30 hosts. Hosts means devices pretty much. And you should note that this might not be all of the hosts on the network. For example, I have more devices that just don't respond to this type of scan. So that's a ping scan. That's how you can find devices once you're on a network. For example, if you went to a business and they asked you to do a penetration test, maybe they give you access to the network by plugging you in or giving you the Wi-Fi, you might run this scan to find devices on the network that you might be able to compromise. It's probably gonna be quite noisy and the security tools will pick it up, but that's a different episode. So let's take a look at the ScanMe Nmap website. So let's probe it and let's run a script scan and a service version scan. If we look at the Nmap results, you can see 
here we have script scans where it tries to run scripts to detect what it might be vulnerable to. And then we can also run a service version scan. That'll try and detect the service versions of the software running on that device. So let's nmap scv. You don't need to type this. You just need to do that. And then output all formats to the nmap website scan results. We're going to use four threads to make it go faster. And the domain is scanme.nmap.org. And we want it to be verbose. And as you can see already, it's starting to find open ports on that device. Port 22 is SSH, which is a secure shell. We're not going to bother touching that one. Port 80 is a website. So it might just be the nmap website, I'm not too sure. Let's copy the IP address and come back over here, paste that in and put in port 80 with a colon. And it is, it is the nmap website, happy days. And we also see two more ports discovered, 9929 and this one, which is elite, E-L-E-E-T in hackerspeak. So the whole scan's finished now, and here's what we can see. Port 22, as I said, was SSH, and it is open SSH version 6.6.1 P1, running on an Ubuntu stack, okay? Port 80 is open, and it's HTTP. We know that because we visited that website, and that's running Apache version 2.4.7, probably. And if we scroll down further, we get these two other ports. Now, if this server was vulnerable, you would see those results in this output. In here, you would see more output under port 80 if the web server was vulnerable. Maybe it was an old version of Apache they were running and you would see extra output that says vulnerable to Heartbleed, for example. And then you could go and figure out how to exploit that vulnerability. Now, if you don't like this output, maybe you're scanning a whole bunch of machines and you want some sort of nice, clean, simple way to read the output. When we output the formats, we get three different files. One of them is this XML file. And if you want, you can view it like this. Much prettier and easier to read. You can see here, this is all the same output that we saw before, the IP address, the host name of scanme.nmap.org with four ports opened, and then it tells us what's running on each port. The instructions are just here, how to use it. Run a new nmap scan and add this as the style sheet to your nmap scan with this argument. So nmap, all of your normal options, but then dash dash style sheet, and then you got to include this URL. So you could just come in here and copy this command, for example, and paste it into your command line to have a play. And then just follow the rest of these instructions and you'll end up with your beautiful nmap results. So that is nmap in a nutshell. Rule number one, do not scan anything you don't have permission to scan. You could end up with the police at your front door. I'm deadly serious. So only use this inside lab environments where you have express permission to do so. Rule number two, have a play.